You're listening to Big World Network. Just Kill Me, Season 4, Episode 8, I Remember, written and read by Wendy Herman. One thing the movies don't exaggerate much is that FBI agents are always targets for bad guys, and in the event of said bad guys succeeding in exacting their revenge, and to avoid grieving families having to search for important paperwork, such as life insurance policies and investment portfolios, the FBI began providing a top-secret room of safety deposit boxes. The existence of the room was number five on the list of things agents were never allowed to talk about with civilians. Ever. I'd been down to the vaults once before. About six years ago, an agent had died and I had been given the task of retrieving the contents of his vault and to personally deliver them to the pregnant wife he'd left behind. It was cathartic for me to ease some of the burden off this young grieving widow, and she actually smiled when she realized the stack of papers included a letter her husband had written to their unborn child. I'd never had a vault of my own, or at least I didn't think I did. It seemed I'd had a vault for twenty years. Number 3502. When I asked Trevor why my vault was here at this headquarters, when I hadn't started my career here, he explained that the vaults move with the agents, the numbers staying the same. According to Trevor, I had left explicit instructions that I never be personally contacted about my vault, but that it still follow me wherever I go. Right. Why the hell would I do that? Trevor looked at me suspiciously and shrugged. I'm hoping the contents of the vault will explain everything. I was getting really tired of everyone's vague answers to my questions. I took Freya's hand as we followed Trevor down to the super-secret room. Touching her made me feel better. We reached the room and it was so concealed I felt like we were going into a crypt. When we were finally standing in the vault room, I started toward the wall to look for number 3502, but an alarm sounded when I crossed from the carpet to the bare tile in front of the vaults. A computer panel appeared out of the wall to my left, and when I stepped back onto the carpet, the alarm ceased. I'd forgotten. A password was required to approach the vaults. I looked at Trevor, waiting for him to go to the panel and type in the password, but he just looked back at me. "'What are you waiting for?' I asked, not trying to hide my irritation. He grinned, and I wanted to punch him in the face. "'I don't know your password, Rip.' My mouth dropped open. "'What?' How the hell am I supposed to know it when I don't even remember getting the damn box? He was so calm, so eerily, frustratingly calm. Let's just take a minute and think. Obviously, you would have used something that you would be able to guess right away, even without your memory. I just stared at him. Was he serious? Wait, I thought you said we hadn't made a contingency plan of any kind. Freya fired at Trevor. We hadn't, he answered, and settled his gaze on me. Freya turned and looked at me, and I could see the wheels turning through her eyes. What? I defended. So I got a vault without the two of you knowing. They continued to scrutinize me, and it was making me very nervous. You can't be mad at me. Hell, I don't even remember doing it. Whatever I did. Can we move on, please? I burst out at the end of my rant, and they both snapped out of their trances. Freya put her hands on my shoulders, forcing me to face her. Honey, we're not mad. Just try to think. If you were asked to make a password right now, what would you choose? Great. It suddenly felt like old times. Trevor and Freya standing together, and me, all alone. I closed my eyes and tried to clear my head. If I had to create a password right now... But I'm not the same person I was then. I nodded at Freya and forced a smile. She dropped her hands and I turned and slowly approached the password terminal. I closed my eyes and delved deep into my emo- into my memories. Since movies had always been a big part of my life, those were the first things that came flooding back. I remembered I was a huge Arnold Schwarzenegger fan, and Total Recall was my favorite movie back then, along with just about everything else that involved futuristic gun battles. Who am I kidding? I still love a good sci-fi shootout. As I tried to pull up a memory of that time, however, I realized that was all I remembered. Specifics of that whole year were still eluding me. 
hidden somewhere in my brain because of the implant. My head began to spin. I looked down at the floor and then closed my eyes again, tighter. Nothing. I decided to follow Freya's lead. What password would I choose today? Everything that came to mind I quickly dismissed because they were things I wouldn't have known about 20 years ago. I kept going back to my buddy Arnold. I was certain I would have chosen something that would make me laugh. That's just the kind of guy I am. Something from a movie. My mission was to discern what one word would have been funny to me then, and something the 23-year-old me knew the future me would be able to figure out. No problem. I sighed deeply with frustration. You only get three tries, and then the system locks you out for 24 hours, so... Trevor suddenly piped in, and I opened my eyes but didn't turn toward him. That's useful information. Thank you. I responded sarcastically at the keyboard in front of me. Sorry, I just remembered. The apologetic new Trevor was unsettling. I took a few cleansing breaths and stood up straight, positioning my fingers above the keys. I typed, H-O-U-S-E-R. A buzzing sound and the words, Access denied in red let me know my first guess was wrong. Okay, then it had to be Q-U-A-I-D. Buzzing and red words filled my senses. Damn, one guess left. There was only one word I could think of, but it seemed too easy. Too common a word to be a mysterious password that had kept something safe for 20 years. But I had nothing else. Either I'm right or we wait 24 hours and try again. I cracked my knuckles and then typed. R-E-M-E-M-B-E-R The mutant Quato's mumblings to one Douglas Quaid had been the second most quote-worthy line of the epic movie, and I definitely did remember repeating it over and over, much to Freya's annoyance. We must have seen the movie together, before Trevor, before RBW, before they both ruined our lives. A green light and then the panel slid from beneath my fingers, disappearing into the wall again. I turned and mentally prepared myself for what I would find in vault number 3502. I stepped onto the tile floor and paused. No alarm. I walked to the middle of the room and scanned the wall of boxes. 3500, 3501, 3502. It was too high to reach, even for Trevor's 6'5 stature. I searched the small cave and finally found an almost invisible cupboard that housed a compact step stool. Even on the top step, I had to stretch my arm to its limit to reach the fingerprint scanner. I pressed my thumb against the small panel, and after a few seconds, the vault slowly came out of the wall. I pulled it free and climbed down, sitting on the floor like a child with his first Christmas present. Freya sat next to me, but Trevor remained standing, although his expression gave away that he was just as anxious and excited as Freya and I were. I opened the box, and we all peered in at the contents. There was only one item inside, a VHS tape with the title, Remember, in black marker. It was my handwriting. Now all we had to do was find a VCR. Listening to Big World Network.